Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a weird thing that happened when I was trying to update the AI flight with Unity ML Agent's Udemy course. Uh, so I was basically, there really aren't that many changes between the last time I updated the course to version 14 of ML Agents, which came out this month, but I was hitting a weird issue where my training looked like this. So these are two different training runs. Uh, the red line and the blue line are actually both exactly the same training. I didn't change any code. I didn't change anything in the actual Unity scene. I just incremented, incremented the name from Planes 11 to Planes 12. And I was getting this. And I was very confused because I really couldn't figure out why something that worked uh, in a previous version did not work. And so what you can see here is the cumulative reward is going up over time, as you know you would expect. If, if something's learning, then it's going to get more and more reward. And then all of a sudden, in this case, in the red case, it just tanks for a few minutes. So like maybe from 40 minutes to about uh, 45 minutes. So five minutes, it just kind of dips. Okay, I'll forgive it that time. And then over here, it tanks and it just bottoms out, craters out for like an hour. Um, maybe even more than an hour. And so uh, it did eventually recover and it was doing fine. And up here, when it's getting about 20, um, 20 for its reward, that means in training, it is successfully making it through all the checkpoints like without fail every single time it's at that point when you if you try to race against airplanes that have been training that long you will not win i promise you i i cannot win against them they are that good that they're able to fly through these checkpoints without any issues it's crazy um which actually is why i have to stop the training early for like a normal opponent if you want to have any chance of winning anyway um this blue run here actually cratered out later. And as a teacher in this case, as an instructor um, of this course, I would really rather that the experience the students get is consistent every time and not, you know, oh, well, you know, let it run and hopefully it doesn't bottom out for an hour and a half uh, and then just come back and stop it when it's good. Um, that's not exactly the experience I was hoping for. So I was trying to figure out why the hell this was happening. Um, so I went to the Unity ML Agents forum, um, which is new and you should totally utilize this because they will help you with issues. Um, and let me, let me open this in a new, new tab just to show you the, um, the current link to this. I'll put this in the description, but it's this forum.unity.com slash forum slash ML dash agents dot four, five, three. So if you want to if you want to ask questions here, this is a great place to do it. So I asked my question. I basically already explained to you what was happening here, showed my graph. And um, then I did an experiment in the meantime while I was waiting for them. To be fair, it hadn't been that long. It had only been like half a day. Um, and suddenly realized that if I turned off curiosity, then this happened. It stays up. It goes up and it stays up. So that was a good thing. That's exactly what I wanted. It was, there was no like uh, no bad things happened by turning off curiosity. So that meant that I probably didn't understand how curiosity actually worked because um, you know I, I had just been turning it on, hoping that it made it work better. Um, so Jeff and Irvin responded to me, and uh, so. Basically, Irvin says that that makes a lot of sense for curiosity. And what he's saying is check out the curiosity reward at those times because crashes and failures tend to be very unpredictable and result in all sorts of weird states. So the curiosity module tends to find them very interesting. So I had actually not seen this prior because it this uh, policy thing had been minimized in TensorBoard. Oops. So let me open this up and show you what was happening with my curiosity. So right around those times, so let me let me point out where it was. So it was, the biggest one was at like um, this one right here. So about 5 million steps. I'm looking in the black box there. Uh, and it went until about 
10 million steps. And then the blue one had a bottom out around 15 million. So let's take a look down here. So right around 5 million to 10 million was when Curiosity was getting a really good reward. It was actually uh, very curious about what was happening. And right around 15 million is when the blue line got very curious. So I think the airplanes had found some interesting ways to die and spent an hour just experimenting with death, I guess. Um, so what I was seeing when I was actually training, not that I sat there and watched it for, you know, the six hours that it was training, but there were certain times where the airplanes would just be spiraling up into the, into the sky or just spiraling down and crashing immediately. They weren't trying to get to the checkpoints at all. Um, and so that makes a lot of sense, actually. What was happening was they were getting rewarded for cur being curious and doing something new. So I thought that would be an interesting thing to share with you guys. If you are having problems with curiosity or curiosity is working, but you don't fully understand it, there's clearly more to it that I don't understand. But um, it's it's very interesting to at least know about this chart to see, is it is it being rewarded for being curious? curious? So that was the gist of what I wanted to show you in, in this video, but I will give you a little... Um, little update on the course as well. So my plan was to update the course to version 14, as I have with version 12 and 13. So both 12 and 13 have come out since I released the course. Um, and to be clear, the course was released only a couple months ago. They've been updating this very frequently. And the updates have been quite small. Um, actually, even up to 14, the updates have been quite small. And so I've been able to update the course with small lectures in between that just kind of explain, okay, this is going to change, you need to change this one line of code, that sort of thing. But unfortunately, with version 14, even though the code was simple enough to update, the, um, the scene itself was uh, a little bit harder. And by scene, I guess I mean the airplane um, sort of prefab. So I'm just going to give you a little preview. I know that some of you haven't taken the course, and so if you're not interested, then, you know, tune out now. Um, for those of you who have taken the course or are actively taking the course, um, this might be helpful. I can't, I just, unfortunately, I'm traveling for business next week. I've got a lot of stuff going on um, with my, you know, my day job, which actually pays my bills, and um, I just won't be able to do a good job updating the course, and I'll explain why. So, the airplane um, prefab basically has changed uh, because the old way of doing ray perception is now completely deprecated. You can't use it anymore. Um, and so the big, I would say the biggest change is that I've made it so that they're, we're using the ray perception sensor 3D on three child components of the airplane. Um, so basically there's one that goes across the center that is, uh, and actually, let me see if I can just show you really quick. Um, I'm going to play the game, and then I'm going to try to pause it and see if we can actually visualize these rays. So I'm going to pause it and go into the scene view. Let's see. Can we see? Can we see these? Turn on the gizmos. Uh, I can't see it yet. Hold on. Let me open the scene view and see. Okay, so we can see the lines. Oh, come on. Sorry, this is not doing what I want it to do. Turn off maximize on play. Okay, let's resume and I'm gonna try to get it paused. All right, it just doesn't wanna behave for me. Um, so basically what is happening here is we've got these airplanes that are visualizing their environment uh, with these ray casts, okay? I was hoping to show you in a little more detail, but it's just not behaving for me. Um, so the ray perception used to be attached to the same uh, level as the agent, but that's gone. Um, and now I'm handling it with three ray perception um, empty objects that kind of uh, start here at the beginning of, or at the front of the airplane, 
Um, there's one that goes across the center that has a bunch of rays, like seven rays kind of fanning out along the horizon. Then there's one that points up by 18 degrees and one that points down by 18 degrees, and that composes the ray perception now. Um, there's a little checkbox on the behavior parameters that says use child sensors, and that is the way that you say, hey, look in your direct children and look for any sensor components that show up and add those automatically to the list of observations. So as a result, now our vector observation space size has dropped down to nine. Um, and let's see what else has changed. Pretty much nothing else has changed here, except that there used to be something that specified um, how frequently to ask for a decision. And that has been moved out of the agent. And now there's a new component you can add called decision requester that will ask for a decision every you know x number of steps so in this case five then repeat the action um, and so that's kind of the result you'll get if you add a decision requester otherwise it won't work um, so that's that's really the fundamentals of changing uh, there's no academy anymore um, that is accessed with a, a singleton now but aside from that things are mostly the same so um, I say that all because if you've been interested in taking this course and you were like, well, it's not updated with version 14, um, trust me, the differences between 13 and 14 are really not that big of a deal. And um, if you want to wait, absolutely, go ahead. I'm not, I, that's, that's cool. I'm going to try and update the course with new videos uh, soon. I just... Um, I think you can get a lot of value by taking the course and just using version 13. Uh, and you know, the, the update path is, is quite small. Um, my experience, you know, working with ML agents all this time is that it's better to start early and start kind of getting your understanding wrapped around, uh, really any AI topic, the more time you have spent with it, the more nights you've slept on it, uh, the more experiments you've done the more results you're going to get, the more you're going to understand it. Because I've been working on, with ML agents since version, I think, six. And uh, when I first started doing it, I had no clue what was going on. Um, but now, after many days and nights working on it, um, I, I understand it a lot better. So starting, you know, starting while it's in beta um, will make you that much more successful with it um, in the future. So... Thank you so much for watching. If you've stuck around this long, um, I'm impressed. And I, I just want to thank all of the people who've been interested in this course and taken this course. You know, if you have any questions and you're trying to update your project to version 14, I will definitely respond to you inside the course. Um, I try to respond to everybody. And uh, all I ask in return is that you do your best when you're asking questions to ask and give as much information as possible. Um, sometimes it's really hard for me to answer questions when someone just posts an error message with no other context and just says, I'm getting this error, help me. And I'm like, okay, I really wanna help you, but it's really hard. Um, so yeah, just tell me what you've done and uh, show me, you know, share code, all that stuff. I will be very happy to help you. Um, so as always, thank you so much for tuning in to the Immersive Limit content, uh, and hopefully we'll have some exciting new stuff for you very soon.